Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial we'll be exploring four different ways to create symmetry in Adobe Illustrator. Symmetry can add balance and visual interest to your designs and it's a useful technique to learn. Additionally, since you will only need to create one side of the illustration, you will save a ton of time. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before jumping to explain any of these four ways on how to create symmetry, let me show you how to do this health shape so that we can use it to go over the different tools and techniques for creating symmetry. Let's grab the pen tool and choose any color you desire. I'll go with a white so it will stand out against the purple background. After that, let's raise the stroke size to 15 points and slightly zoom in to see where we place our anchor points. We can simply follow the shape below by drawing some lines. Be careful here, you must hold down the shift key in order to click in this already drawn line. It's really simple to do, we need to create some anchor points and that's it. You can download this file and use it right away. I'll provide the download link in the section below. I wanted to create three different versions of the same shape to see if there is a difference when doing the reflection. At the top it's a closed stroke, in the center it's an open stroke and at the bottom it's a full color without any stroke. I've created a shadow here just to make the two triangles visible. I like to keep my sample locked and untouchable so that we can use it several times. Let's make a copy just by creating a new layer with the name reflect1, then putting it below the sample layer. Now draw a rectangle the same size as my canvas, which is 4000 pixels, wide and high. To match the background color, I press the I key. Then I center the rectangle just by clicking on the horizontal and the vertical align center at the top. Make sure to lock this layer so we don't accidentally move it. To create a guideline, click on the pen tool. You will see a pink line appear, which indicates that you are in the center. To turn this feature on, go to the view menu and activate the smart guide option. Let's click on the top of the artboard, then hold down the shift key to get these perfect angles of 45 or 90 degrees. To make sure it's centered, just check the Align to Artboard option and select Horizontal Align Center. And finally, lock it in place just like we did before. Now it's time to select all the shapes from the sample layer. Hold down the Alt key and drag this little blue square into the Reflect 1 layer to make a copy. Now let's select the shapes, right click and choose Transform Reflect. We can view the reflected shapes just by clicking on Previous. As you can see, the reflected shapes are positioned in the same rectangular area as the original ones, so this technique might not be the best option for us. If I click the horizontal axis, it will reflect the shapes horizontally, and the same goes for the vertical axis as well. We can also choose any angle we want for the reflection. If we hit OK, we'll keep the reflected shapes and lose the original ones. But don't worry, we can always go back just by clicking Ctrl Z. Now go ahead and select the reflected shapes. Move them slightly, then hold down the Shift key while moving to keep them in a straight line. The shapes are now aligned and all that's left to do is to connect them. Let's zoom in and use the Shape Builder tool to merge them by clicking and dragging our cursor over these two shapes. Easy right? I'll finish it off by drawing a line and there we have it, a perfect shape. Let's head over here and repeat the same process, we just have to give it a click to merge the shapes since they are not closed. And by the way, there is another technique to merge them too. Let's go back, select them then press Ctrl J. What do you think? Which one do you prefer? Personally, I think the click option is the best because it's just so simple and quick, don't you think? I'm gonna wrap up this drawing by adding the line just like before. Let's move on to the third one. It's going to be the same as previously. So this method works fine, no more if it's a closed stroke, open stroke or even a full color. 
The only downside is that it reflects in the same area as the original one, which we noticed together. Let's move on to the second way. I'll speed up for now because I already explained it, so feel free to go back and review it. This way we can keep all the layers untouched so we can easily modify or compare them later. Now let's select everything and press O on your keyboard to choose the reflect tool. From here we can easily do a copy just by clicking on any anchor point you like. Let's zoom in a little bit and click on the anchor point at the top to open up this panel. It's the same as previously, but with one key difference. We can now select the anchor point from which we want to copy, instead of it being automatic. This saves us time on adjustment later. Now that the shapes are reflected in place, I'll quickly speed up this part, since it's the same as before. I personally find this method quicker, but it's up to you to decide which one you prefer. I'll explain all the methods and you can choose the one that suits you best. Let's move on to the third method. I'll create a new layer for the mirror effect and copy the sample layer again. I'll be speeding up this part since you already know how to do it. Let's select the shapes and go to Object, Repeat Mirror. As you can see, it's currently mirroring on the wrong side. We can move the mirror line to the right or to the left. However, moving the mirror line over the original shapes results in a loss of details. It's also quite challenging to align the mirror line perfectly at a 90 degree angle. So I'll simply write it down here. Let's move the mirror line now, but be careful not to merge the shapes. Even a slight degree can cause the shapes to disappear. Although this method has a few drawbacks, there is always a good side to it. If we draw far away from the mirror axis, the reflection will occur simultaneously. However, if we deactivate the isolation mode, no reflection will occur. Therefore, we need to double click to activate it before starting to draw anything. In case double clicking doesn't activate the isolation mode, we can activate it through the preferences. Alternatively, we can right click on the shapes and click on isolate selected repeat. Before attempting to merge the shapes, let's follow these steps. Select the shapes, go to object expand and click OK. Now let's zoom in to combine them. We can't use the shape builder tool since it's just a mirror image. This method isn't really my thing. There are quite a few downsides that make it less appealing. Let's give it another shot. Let's draw a shape, but this time we'll place the mirror axis far away and just like before, we'll activate the mirror mode to create the reflection. One thing to note is that if we try to move just one shape within this group, we might lose some details when we go beyond the boundaries of the rectangle that contains both shapes. Alright guys, it's time to explore the fourth method, transform. As usual, let's start by making a copy of our sample layer. Now select all the elements and don't forget to group them together. Trust me, this step is crucial. If we skip grouping and directly apply the transform effect, we'll end up with some distortions. So remember, group the element first and then we can apply the transform effect. Let's click on Reflect X to reflect along the horizontal axis. Adjust the position using the small rectangle on the middle left. Make sure to keep one copy to preserve the main shapes and then press OK. Go to Expand Appearance under the Object menu before ungrouping it. This will ensure that we have both the reflected shapes and the original ones separately. If we zoom in, we may notice that they aren't perfectly aligned because the reflection is applied to the entire shape and not based on the anchor point. But don't worry, we can always make adjustments to align the shapes properly. Just hit Ctrl Y to see the lines and the anchor points more clearly. This makes it easier to match and align the anchor points accurately. So let's go ahead and zoom in as much as possible to get a close-up view. Our goal here is to align the shapes perfectly, so take your time and focus on achieving precise alignment. 
Now that the shapes are perfectly aligned, let's switch back our previous mode by pressing Ctrl Y. From here, all we need to do is merge the shapes together, just like we did before. There are two inconveniences with this method. The first is that joining the anchor points require more time and effort. The second is that we can't draw and see the reflection simultaneously. However, there is a quick trick to solve these problems. This trick will help you achieve symmetry quickly and easily while allowing you to see the reflection when you draw in. Alright, let's switch to a new document because we are going to need three layers and to keep things organized. Sure, you can definitely use the same document if you prefer, the choice is yours. Now grab the pen tool to create a guideline, I've already explained it earlier. Finally, make sure to lock the entire layer and give it a name that you like. We need to create another layer to work on the symmetry. We'll start by drawing a vertical line in the center. To do this, press on vertical align center and then horizontal align center to ensure that the line is perfectly centered. Select the entire layer by clicking on this small circle icon. Just like before, go to the effect menu and choose transform. Next, Click on Reflect X because we want the reflection to be along this axis. Choose one copy to have both the reflected and the original drawing. Let's hide and lock this line so that we can draw without any distractions. Now let's give it a try and start drawing using any tool. I'll begin with the Curvature tool. As you can see, we have our reflection simultaneously while drawing. It's similar to the mirror method, but even better, because we have the flexibility to crisscross our lines. In my opinion, this method is the best, because it simplifies the process of creating symmetry, making it easier and quicker. Now I'll try more tools, and so far, I haven't come across any issues. Let's delete these shapes and import a butterfly drawing. You can find the image in the description below to use it as a reference. Make sure to place it in a separate layer and reduce its opacity to 20% or 50% as you prefer. Then lock this layer. Now you can use the symmetry layer to redraw the butterfly. Personally, I recommend using the Curvature tool for this task. If you are not familiar with it or if you are struggling to create beautiful shapes with it, I highly recommend watching my video. I've covered everything from basic shapes to advanced ones. You can find the link in the description below. I speed up the drawing process, but if you prefer to see it in real time, please let me know in the comment section. I'll post it next time. Now that I've done the retracing part, I'll explain the appearance and we're done! Thank you guys for watching my video until the end, I truly appreciate your support. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment in the section below. This will help me enhance the quality of my videos. Stay tuned for the next video. Bye!